Uh, that, that is, of course, P, J, and Duncan. Uh, with, uh, let's get ready to rumble, which I mean. Uh, summarizes, summarizes our approach to how we sort our bone cancer. Um, a little bit of housekeeping uh, before we get any further. Uh, tomorrow uh, at 10.40 there are workshops, and for the first time we're doing three what are called PPI workshops. So this is uh, patient and public involvement. So for those of you that don't know, if you're a researcher writing a research grant at the moment, you have to demonstrate that you have patient and public involvement. And a lot of what the lot of the work that you've just done actually, and a lot of the work that was done last year, kind of helps set the agenda for uh, research into this area going forward. And so uh, tomorrow's sessions are really about uh, discussing three, uh, uh, two grants that are actually in the process of being uh, written, and one other uh, project which I think will lead to some funding. What the work, what the uh, what the program doesn't make absolutely clear is what they're about. And the first one, uh, the first one does, it's all about early diagnosis or what makes a good diagnosis. That's Lorna Fern and Rebecca Birch. Uh, the one that my name's against is actually about an initiative that you may know about already, which is called the National MDT for Unions. So this is a national forum to discuss how patients should be, or what the best recommendation for treatment would be for a particular patient with a Ewing sarcoma. Um, so if you're interested in Ewing sarcoma and how that system might work, then perhaps that might be the workshop we want to go to. I know you've already allocated uh, workshops, but there's an opportunity to change. And Sharon Fatale uh, is going to present the results of quite a unique audit that she's done, but it's around amputation. Okay, so if you're interested in amputation and services for people who have amputation or rehabilitation, then that's what Sharon's workshop is about. So just, I wasn't sure if what you had pre the meeting made all those things clear. Just to make sure you end up somewhere where you're interested and engaged and uh, <coughs> want to contribute. So that's brilliant. Any questions? Ah, right. Okay. So, um, so I know you're all sitting there saying, well, look, BCRT has been around for a few years now. Why haven't we cured bone cancer? Uh, and that's a really good question. And this is a list of excuses, right? So, um, um, and of course, the uh, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of difficult, right? Because uh, bone cancers are rare. So here is somebody thinking about having a cure bone cancer, and it's difficult. But in common with other rare cancers, um, there are a number of factors that make it challenging, okay? And the first one is this that you all know about, which is delayed diagnosis. So we all hear a lot of stories about either delayed diagnosis or incorrect diagnosis being given at an early stage. And this is actually a common factor with a lot of things, uh, including non-cancer diagnosis like juvenile arthritis, like diabetes, like brain tumors, and so on. Um, so it's difficult. Getting access to the right care is difficult if you have a rare disease. Who do you go and see? And how do they know the, the treatment they're offering you is the right thing? Getting the right information is important. And again, these are themes that people have come up with all the time. Easily. Uncertainty is about treatment. So even in the biggest centers, if you see somebody with a Ewing sarcoma, of which there are only 60 a year in England and Wales, see somebody with a Ewing sarcoma in an unusual site. There are trade-offs that need to be made for a particular patient that may each patient really quite individual, so there are some uncertainties about how, uh, how people are best treated. Research is very difficult. It's difficult to find enough patients to really make uh, meaningful studies. And this is the thing we're really up against, which is that there hasn't been any uh, improvement survival. This is a, a graph from the National Cancer Intelligence Network, which still uh, must take some uh, credit, looking at uh, overall survival for bone tumors. That's 2002 and that's 1979. So it hasn't really changed in the last 30 years. So these are the challenges. But at BCRT, these, this is what's been going on. Okay, so um, we are trying. Okay, I'm trying on your behalf, and everyone in this room. Uh, is making a contribution in one way or another, which is absolutely fantastic. So, what are we doing about delayed diagnosis? Well, um, a few things. I've heard about Awareness Week. Um, we, uh, or BCRT, participated in a meeting looking at delayed diagnosis in a number of conditions that I mentioned to you. And as a result of that, uh, we're at the moment paying for somebody or uh, funding a project, uh, which you'll hear about tomorrow, which is the Lawn of Thurman Becca Birch project. So we're supporting them in association with the uh, Guy Francis Research uh, Fund and also with Teenage Cancer Trust. So we're helping them to write a grant proposal which looks at this particular issue. So we're not only raising awareness, but actually we're trying to tackle some of the issues by looking at research behind it. 
You've heard a bit about the GP educational module. Um, we work uh, in collaboration with other charities, such as the Bone Cancer Awareness Trust. So is there anybody here from the Bone Cancer Awareness Trust? So we're here. Um, so they're based in the southwest, and again, very keen in raising awareness about bone cancer. So we've supported them by providing with information and so So we want to we try and make this better. But it's not just our problem. It's a problem of a lot of uh, red issues. Um, access to care, what are we doing about this? Well, <laughs> it was working so well, wasn't it? So what, what did Bone Cancer Research Trust do? There's a new drug for osteosarcoma called myfermatine, uh, which is uh, relatively controversial, but one of the issues was the fact that patients didn't have access to it. So uh, this organization, as you know, was involved in an advocacy project really looking for, were advocates for uh, patients and families. Uh, and uh, it encouraged NICE to go through what turned out to be the longest uh, review process, I think, that they've had, and this drug is now available to patients uh, who choose to have it with osteosarcoma. Um, and we're represented on national bodies, so um, Harry, for example, goes to the National Cancer Intelligence Network Clinical Reference Group, so that's, you know, there is now lots and lots of data sitting on the National Cancer Intelligence Network, so, so you can say there were, you know, there are 60 or thereabouts uh, using sarcomas every year, and we know what their outcomes are, so this is data that's quite essentially. But if you want to ask questions, so if this organization comes forward and says, actually, you know, there's a really important thing around, um, you know, the, geo the geographic distribution of these patients, for example, then we thought it was important as a group. We could take that and ask at the end time and look at that. So, um, you know, that's, that's very important. So we're being represented on uh, national bodies. Uh, information, well, you know, there's been a lot of work, uh, a lot of work around information. Uh, John Newby, who was a former, uh, former uh, information officer, a lot of you knew before he sat and died, did a lot of work in getting the information standard in place. Harry has taken that on. So we've been re appraised this year, haven't we, for the information standard, um, which, uh, which is really quite important, quite hard to get. Lots of stuff on the internet. As you know, there's a project to revisit the website at the moment. We have prize winning, prize winning, I tell you, <laughs> prize winning information outside at the gate. So that's the Teenage and Cancer. Uh, Bone tumor, uh, the, the osteosarcoma and the uric sarcoma leaflets, uh, which won prizes uh, or won a prize at the BMA Information Awards. Uh, I think it was this year, wasn't it? Which was very good. Uh, and we were, until its sad disappearance under the present reorganization, part of the National Information Prescription, which meant that the idea being you could go and have the right information prescribed by uh, a specialist nurse or someone in the COVID team in the RT, you could go to the internet and pick out the relevant things the things that were important for you in your treatment. Um, so we have participated in that. I don't know if anyone knows what's happening with the National Information Prescription, but it does seem to have fallen off the radar a bit. Uncertainties about treatments, okay, so what have we done with that? Well, um, it must be uh, five or six years ago now, we had a, a Belfry had a consensus meeting about using sarcoma, so uh, there was a study that seemed to show differences between outcomes for patients in this country and outcomes in Germany. We thought the differences were around how patients, how patients' primary tumors were treated rather than their chemotherapy. So, uh, Bone Cancer Research Trust funded a meeting, you may have heard about this already, where uh, there were participants from, I think, 16 countries who sat down and we showed cases and discussed how each case should be treated. And at the end of that, we came up with uh, a realization that actually there was a lot of area where there wasn't necessarily consistency in treatment. Subsequent to that, we now discuss uh, every patient with urine sarcoma at a national urine MGT, um, which has been, which I told you about earlier, but it's actually been absolutely fantastic in terms of identifying what it is we agree on. In other words, what do we really know uh, is the right treatment? You know, what conditions do we really, really know we can treat well and adequately? And what particular urine sarcomas do we need to perhaps do studies on? We need to be, um, you know, a little bit more open about the fact we're not sure how, how to treat them. So for example, some tumors in the pelvis and the same can be very difficult, uh, can be very difficult to treat. Um, so that's really been fabulous and both cancer research process had an input into uh, into the national news entity. Uh, and uh, following an exercise at the British Sarcoma Group uh, where we were wondering how to take all the sarcoma in general in the UK one of the things that came up was the fact that Sarkin and nurses needed to meet and exchange information and the PCRT funded that. So there's been a lot, you know, this organisation has really done a lot 
towards improving collaboration uh, and discussion about self and national. Uh, research is very difficult. So uh, what are we doing about that? Well, funding, obviously. A lot of money, okay, one and a half million on us. Um, the Scientific Advisory Panel now, we're delighted that Andy Hall's taken this role on because he's come with a whole load of new ideas. He's a very smart chap, he's going to tell you who's going to talk to you next. Um, but essentially having an active Scientific Advisory Panel that can uh, review applications, make them better, and give feedback to researchers is very important. Because we want to encourage researchers, uh, we want to make their ideas stronger. We don't, want to, uh, we don't necessarily want to turn people away, uh, but they have to have good quality projects. Uh, we had a meeting to try and encourage tumour banking because it was felt at a meeting that we had in Leeds uh, three or four years ago that scientists wanted tumour in the fridge that they could do experiments on, to cut long story short. So we had a meeting about how to crack this. I'm not sure we have quite cracked it yet, uh, but that's definitely on the agenda. Patient public involvement, I've told you about before, and rest assured, as I said to you, the things that come up at this meeting do help inform really the national agenda for research, what research should, for example, the National Cancer Research Institute Sarcoma Studies Group, which looks at randomised trials in sarcoma, what kind of research should they be doing? Okay, and uh, you know, you'll see the newsletter, and this diagram, which is outside, uh, which is the funding tree. So these are things that are funded, and this is where the money comes from. So the branch, roots and branches have come to you already. Fantastic bit of work on um, showing the scale of what's been funded uh, and the fact that it is over so half a million. It's a fantastic work. Bro. And it's through that that we're going to start cracking this with luck that there's been no improvement in survival by simulating search, raising awareness in this advocacy role, which brings up bone cancer as an important topic for research elsewhere. And with your help, we'll kick it into such. Thank you very much. <laughs>